Okay, a couple of other examples of ionic compounds. If the compound was potassium nitrate. You know potassium is K, and you know it has a plus one charge because it's in group one. If you've memorized your polyatomic ions, and you should, you know that nitrate is NO3 with a minus one charge. And when we put these together, a plus one and a minus one will neutralize each other, so the formula for potassium nitrate is KNO3. Calcium sulfate. We know calcium is Ca with a plus two charge because it's in group two. Again, sulfate, polyatomic ion, we have those memorized. It's SO4 with a minus two charge. So when we put calcium with a plus two and sulfate with a minus two together, those neutralize each other. It's CaSO4. So what would happen in a case like barium hydroxide, where you have barium with a plus two charge and hydroxide with a minus one charge, so they can't, they don't match up. Like in the potassium nitrate and the calcium sulfate, they're not equal. Well, in this case, you're going to have to swap and drop, which we've been doing. It's just you've been swapping and dropping a plus one and a minus one or a plus two and a minus two. But you have to be careful when you write barium hydroxide. It has to be BA. You've got to put the OH in parentheses and then a two. Common mistake is for people to write BAOH2, which is incorrect. The red is incorrect. The white is correct. Why is the red incorrect? Because it's showing two hydrogens and one oxygen. What is correct in white shows two oxygens and two hydrogens, and that would be the correct way to write barium hydroxide. Now our next type of compounds to practice naming would be molecular compounds. Molecular compounds are made up completely of nonmetals, so those things to the upper right of the stair step of the periodic table. An example of molecular compound is CO2. And CO2, the name of that is carbon dioxide. There's one carbon, so it's carbon. There's two oxygens, hence dioxide. On molecular compounds, you will not swap and drop. On molecular compounds, and your book refers to those as binary molecular compounds, you will use prefixes to indicate the number of the atoms. Those prefixes are things like mono for one, di for two, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, seven is hepta, Octa is eight, nana is nine, and deca is ten. And so those are the prefixes that you're going to put in front of the name of the element. So there are some rules for writing molecular compounds and for naming them. Um, and it's they're pretty simple. You simply use the prefix um, in front of the name of the element. There's only one little thing you've got to watch for, and that's with the use of mono. If the first one is mono, like here in carbon dioxide, you don't say mono carbon dioxide. So you simply never put mono on the first element. However, if the second element, if there's one of those, as in CO, well, that is carbon monoxide. See, if the second one is mono, you would use it. And so that only applies to the use of mono. Uh, NO2. It's not mononitrogen. It's just nitrogen dioxide. Uh, what if the first one is something besides mono, like in N2O? N2O is dinitrogen monoxide. Um, pH 3 would be phosphorus trihydride. 
Notice also that in naming molecular compounds, the first element, it's just getting its plain old element name, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus. But the second one is still ending in ide, I-D-E. Now, we're not swapping and dropping. These aren't charges, but um, they're still going to end in ide. The last group of compounds we need to look at naming is a special group of compounds known as acids. <clears throat> How can you identify a compound that is an acid? Acids will yield hydrogen ions uh, in water. And that's our definition for now. As we delve deeper into chemistry, we can expand on, on that definition. But for now, if it starts with hydrogen, it's going to be an acid. Does that mean every compound that contains hydrogen is an acid? Well, not necessarily. There's two different types of acids. Um, some acids that I refer to as monoatomic acids, it's hydrogen and one other element. So X is any other element. Uh, for these acids, if it's hydrogen and one other element, they will always be named like this. Hydro blank ic acid. And what goes in the blank is the name of that element X. For example, HCl. What goes in the blank? That is hydrochloric acid. HF. See, it's H and one other element. That would be hydrofluoric acid. What if I gave you the name hydro sulfuric acid, what would you write? You know it's an H and an S, but is it simply HS? On acids, we have to go back to swapping and dropping. For HCl, H is plus 1, Cl is minus 1. For HF, H is plus 1, F is minus 1. And again, I know this because of their position on the periodic table. For HS, however, H is plus 1, S is minus 2. So when I swap and drop, Hydrosulfuric acid is H2S. Okay, so that's for the simplest type of acid. Now, there's another type of acids referred to usually as oxoacids, and they contain hydrogen, oxygen, and some other element. Um, oxoacids are usually formed from polyatomic ions, so it really helps in naming oxoacids to be familiar with your polyatomic ions. And the general rule is that if the polyatomic ion ends in 8, then 8 is going to become ick, and the name of the acid is going to be some kind of ick acid. Uh, there are other polyatomic ions that end in ite. Well, if it's going to be an acid, ite is going to become us, and you're going to name it us acid. For example, if I said nitrate ion, the nitrate ion is NO3 with a minus one charge. Now put a hydrogen with that. Hydrogen is plus one. So if I put a hydrogen with that, hydrogen plus one, nitrate's minus one, the formula for the acid is going to look like this. 8 is going to become ick. So instead of the nitrate ion, this would be named nitric acid. The same thing would happen with ite. What does nitrite look like? The nitrite ion is NO2 with a minus 1 charge. If you put an H with it, that would be HNO2. Ite becomes us, so this is nitrous acid. A few other examples. 
What if I said sulfuric acid? How would you write that? Well, it ends in ick. And if I look back here, ick was once eight. So sulfuric was originally sulfate. What is sulfate? We've been working on memorizing those. So that's sulfate, SO4 with a minus 2 charge. For sulfuric acid, I have to put a hydrogen with that. Hydrogen's plus 1. I put those together. I swap and drop them. Sulfuric acid is H2, SO4. What if I were going to do chlorous acid? Chlorus. Us came from ite. So what does chlorite look like? This is the chloride ion. Put an H plus with that. HClO2. When you're dealing with polyatomic ions, whether it's with acids or whether it's with ionic compounds, you never ever change the subscript on your polyatomic ion.